Have you ever wondered if maybe somehow you're unintentionally choosing stress and overwhelm, especially as the holidays approach? Are you feeling stretched thin already by expectations and schedules and the pressure to get everything just right? If that sounds like you, then this episode is for you because yes, you probably have been unintentionally choosing some overwhelm. But today we're going to explore how some small shifts can bring more peace and joy and presence to the season in front of you and cover some practical ways to make this time feel fulfilling. So if you're ready to trade in that stress for peace, settle in because we're going to get into it. I want to welcome you to another episode of Radiant Womanhood. I am so glad you're here today. Thank you for those that have been tuning in and listening, messaging me and experiencing change and sharing that with me on this journey of becoming a radiant woman. So a friend sent me a quote or shared a quote with me recently. And you know that feeling when you hear something, just this phrase or piece of advice, and it sticks with you. So it's been something that has been replaying in my mind ever since that was shared with me. So thank you, friend, that sent that to me. That also, I feel like it could be very fitting for the season we're moving into right now. So again, if you have been feeling this sense of overwhelm already, just as we are barely gearing up for the holiday season, I think this is very setting, but really it's for any time of our lives. So whatever time of the year you happen to be listening to this episode, know that it is timely and it is for you and for right now. But as I record this, heading into the holiday season, it does feel very setting. And that quote is, What you're not changing, you're choosing. I want you to take just a moment and let that sink in for a minute. What you're not changing, you're choosing. And we're going to dive in really to that. But man, it landed hard for me, honestly, because there are so many areas in my life where it's easy to let things stay as they are. Sometimes because it's convenient to do so. Sometimes it's just out of habit. And sometimes it feels like, okay, there just isn't time right now to address this or to change this. But realizing that, okay, but by not changing or taking any step or any action to change, I am, in essence, making a choice to keep those things as they are. I am making a choice to stay in that same situation or headspace or place or whatever it might be, schedule. By not making a change, I am choosing it. And that is a power. Like, it's amazing to realize the power that we hold in just our choices, right? So let's explore kind of what it means to intentionally choose. And I feel like in this season that's coming up, that kind of can feel very filled with demands on our time and in our finances and on our emotional energy. This time of year really is and can be magical. The holidays bring togetherness with family, right? These cozy moments, these traditions. But, and studies even show this and back this up, it can be one of the most overwhelming seasons by choice, right? Or by not choosing another way. So let's talk about maybe what comes with this season. Sometimes it can be financial pressure right? I need to get this. I need to buy these things. We need to have these meals. We need to do these presents. Time cringes. And a lot of times an emotional load that we're carrying. We want to make it all perfect. We want everyone in the family to feel loved. And we want to create memories. I know that's like me. And if you're anything like me, you want your house to feel festive and you want to get these perfect holiday cards out. And also somehow keep everything else running too because life is also still moving in the next couple of months, right? There's still school and there's still work and there's still laundry and dishes and all of the other things. And it feels like we're piling on and then these pressures create a sense of urgency that's almost like just this wave that's pushing us forward. And it's easy to get swept away in it. It's easy to go with that flow. But here's the thing, we can end up choosing things without even realizing it. We can end up choosing stress or we choose overspending and we choose exhaustion simply because we're not changing the way that we approach the season or simply because we're not setting those boundaries or parameters on our spending and our time and what we say yes to. Those are the things that we're choosing. 
So let's dig a little bit deeper here. What if this season we gave ourselves the permission to stop and ask, what am I choosing? It's not always about massive changes, but it's in small intentional shifts. And this is kind of like the episode we just talked about, about being consistent. It's not big things, but it's consistency and the little things. This is very similar to that. It's about in those things that I am walking through in my life, if it's something that I don't necessarily like, but I am not changing, then in essence, I am still choosing that thing. There might be something in your life right now As you sit here, as you're listening to this and you're saying, oh, okay, yes, there is something in my life right now that I don't like. There might be something that you find yourself complaining about. It could be in your relationships, could be in your body, in your finances, in your schedule. But if there's an area that's constantly causing frustration, but yet you're allowing it to stay the same, that's a choice. And I'm not saying this to be harsh, but there are things that can feel too big to change all at once, and it can feel easier to complain than to act. But I want to encourage you in this. You have the power to change it. You have the power, even if it's just in small steps, like we just said, small, consistent steps. So let's look at some areas where we might be choosing things that we don't love and see, okay, How could I start making a shift in this and choosing differently? And let's start with one of our favorites. And then this, I'm being facetious because I think it's the thing that we like to talk about the least a lot of times, but let's start with finances. And especially for the holiday season, instead of maybe trying to buy the perfect gift for everyone, maybe this year, okay, I'm going to consider a handful of meaningful gifts that really show thoughtfulness instead of the quantity of gifts. That's a tough one sometimes because we want, sometimes it goes into, okay, I want my kids to all have an equal amount of gifts or the things that I didn't get to have or, but this is good and this is good. And, oh, I just saw something else that looks amazing and I'm going to do that. And, and I'm not trying to hold you back from gift giving because I believe in generosity and I believe in giving. But I also believe in setting yourself up for success. And actually, um, Chris and I were talking about this. I think we're going to create an episode together where we talk about how we approach December and financially, like what we do through the year to prepare ourselves for this season so it doesn't feel like a stress or on our finances. But that's for a whole other episode that will be coming soon. But I want to encourage you to think about the value isn't necessarily in the cost. It's in the what's behind the gift, the, the love in it or the thought behind it. So I really want you to just try to think of it in that way. Take the pressure off of the finances of the season because there already are going to be pressures this season. And think about ways that you can create maybe experiences over gifts or the thoughtfulness in your gift. And then that gift giving, right? And choosing to spend that time and those finances intentionally can help to remove some of the stress. And I'm speaking specifically to the holiday season, but there are ways that we can make choices intentionally in our finances all throughout the year, right? And if there's something that you don't like in your financial situation, but if you aren't taking the steps to make some changes, however small that might be, then you're choosing to stay where you're at financially, right? And this is in every area. Let's talk about our time. How many of us, especially in the holiday season, it's so easy to fall into this, but we pack our schedule so full that we end up running from one thing to the next and barely having this time, it feels like, to catch our breath. We call it margin, right? We need this margin space in all these areas of an, in our life. But here's a question. What would happen if I said no to one or two things that don't feel aligned with my values for this season? Maybe it's that you don't need to go to every holiday gathering or bake cookies for every neighbor this year. It's okay to choose a pace that feels right for you and for your family. So for me personally, if we go back and we look through our holiday cards over the years, and this is one of the things, you guys, that is like my favorite thing to do. I love 
receiving, and especially the photo cards is really what I like because I like this kind of snapshot of the ones that we received, like what everyone looked like, where we were, everyone's ages, you know, at that time and that year and that season. And that's one of the things I like about sending them out. So for me, these are just one of my favorite traditions. And it feels like I'm sending this little cheer to friends and family. But for me, it's also this beautiful way to keep a physical memory of our family in that snapshot from the year. But there have been a few times where I have chosen my own piece that year over the holiday card. And in particular, I remember it was just a couple of years ago when our twins, I believe it was like they had just started walking and life itself felt overwhelming. (laughs) Everything felt like this balancing act. And it felt like, okay, no matter how much I tried to do, there was something slipping through the cracks. So that was a year that I chose some peace in the holidays. And I had a few moments where I felt guilty and even a little bit sorry for myself because I couldn't do it all. But ultimately, even that year, I chose to nix the cards that year. And I know it can feel like a simple little thing, but I'm telling you, just choose making that choice. And there were a few things that we decided to say no to that year. And over the years, it's been different things, but I nixed the cards that year and focused on keeping my cheese. And it turned out to be the best choice for me in that season. It allowed me to let go of the shoulds and give myself a little grace. And really, it was a learning lesson in giving myself grace. Because like I said, it's a little thing. It could be like, okay, that's holiday cards. For me, it was a big thing in the sense of it was one of my favorite things. But it also had these different, you know, it was setting up a location for photos, getting outfits for the photos, making sure everyone's happy for photos and what's it going to look like and then getting photos edited and then designing the card and then ordering it. And it's all of this. And once I just let go of that, it felt like this weight lifted and it was a choice of peace. And I'm just sharing this because sometimes the choices we make might look a little bit different than what we expected or hoped, but that's okay. Choosing your peace And choosing what truly matters. And for me, that was being a present mama in those moments and in that holiday season, instead of stressing out about this one more thing. Those are the choices that help to bring us the joy and fulfillment in the season. Because those are the times when uh, having family dinner, my mind might have been off in, okay, did I order that? Did we get this set up? Did we do this? And I'm not there with my family enjoying it. Okay, maybe laughing over something that happened at school that day or different things. So think about it in those terms. When we're not changing something, that's what we're choosing. So for me, it was changing a little bit in my schedule and a little bit in my time and a little bit of the expectations and the pressure that I had on myself making a change that so I could choose more in my time. And as we are thinking about that and in a similar vein, let's talk about those self-expectations, right? I feel like this is a big one because it's easy to feel like we're not enough, that we're falling short because maybe we're not checking all the boxes. Usually our boxes that we set up for ourselves. It's usually expectations that were self-imposed in the first place. But what if we chose to let go of quote unquote, what we feel as perfection and instead choose intention. Maybe instead of getting every holiday detail right, we decide to focus on creating just a few meaningful moments that fill us up, that fill up our families, that bring us joy. In deciding what we're going to choose for this season ahead in our time and in our finances and even expectations for ourselves, it's can we doing a few things well, rather than spreading yourself thin and trying to do everything perfectly, right? And and then also moving into this mindset, sometimes there are things that we can't change, but we can change how we see them. So sometimes in that quote, you know, if you're not changing it, you're choosing it. Sometimes it's in how we react or we respond or how we see the thing around us. For example, Chris and I have been encouraging each other in the last like just couple of weeks, like, okay, we are not rushing through the days. I don't want to rush through all of these days where my kids are young. And even though I do feel like uh, I'm out of the trenches of like these newborn stages, but we still have five-year-old twins. And then it feels like every other age (laughs) and stage above that in our home. 
I don't want to rush through just because there are days that feel overwhelming or chaotic or busy, but I want to enjoy these times because I know that there will be another season where we don't have that. So even through the days that feel crazy or in the things that seem mundane, I don't want my mindset to be, let me just get to the next thing. And I talked a little bit about this in our episode about hard things. And if you haven't listened to that one, I encourage you to add that to your queue or send it to yourself so you can listen to it soon. But it talks about doing hard things better. But a lot of times we just want to get past the hard things because we want the next part after that. But a lot of times we can't get to the next part or the good part after the hard thing until we go through that thing. Well, similarly, even in our time and even in the mundane, even if it's not hard, but it's just busy or big or maybe overwhelming. And if we're always rushing through where we're at, then what are we enjoying? So yes, sometimes we can't change that. Yes, we do have family schedules and we have dinners to make and laundry to do and jobs to accomplish, but we can change how we see it and how we're moving through those moments. Maybe the house is loud and feels crazy and chaotic and there are messes and there are kids literally running around and being loud, but they're laughing and having fun. This was, I'm like painting a picture of what my house was just a couple of nights ago at dinner. And it's like this multiple times a night, but Last night, we did have a couple of things for my older kids to go to, so it wasn't quite the same. But when everyone's home and the house is loud, and this is what it looks like, and instead of allowing it to make me feel stressed, and I said allowing it because I only get to feel stressed if that's what I'm choosing, I realized that in that moment, I have a choice. I can feel stressed here. I can feel overwhelmed and, oh, they're just they're being loud and they're running and there's messes and I need to just clean this up. But I decided to step back for a moment and just watch and take it in and allow the joy of the kids running around remind me of something that I had prayed for, for a full, happy house with full, happy bellies. It's a shift, right? In realizing that I am choosing (laughs) to see it this way instead of choosing stress in this moment. But if I had just gone on with like this natural reaction of noise and stuff, it would have been a stressful response or stressful feeling. But guess what? I decided to change instead of choosing that in the moment. It doesn't mean that I changed what was happening around me. But for me in that moment, I changed my response to it. So all of that to say, I believe that intentional choices, we don't have to wait for the new year. They can start today. We don't have to wait to overhaul everything in our life on January 1st, right? We want to enjoy the moments in the season that we're in right now. So what if we make these small, gentle shifts that help us move in the direction we want to go, that help us realize that if I'm not changing what's in front of me, I am choosing it. And maybe you're exactly where you want to be and that's what you're choosing. And you're there in that space because you have been intentionally making choices to be there. But if that isn't you and you're saying, there's things in my life that I want to change, then that's where we get to ask ourselves, what am I choosing? What is one small change that I can make right now? And it could be something simple. It doesn't have to be big, like I said, an overhaul, but begin with these gentle, small choices that end up creating these big shifts without overwhelming us, right? So I want to leave you with just a couple practical takeaways really quick and reflection questions to help you in this choosing intentionally. So think about those areas in your life that feel stagnant maybe, or like they've been on autopilot. Is there something that you're choosing by default? And okay, if so, are you okay with that choice? Is that what you want it to be, right? And then next, ask yourself, if I could change one small thing today that would bring me peace, what would that be? I don't want you to feel pressured. This episode isn't to make you feel like, oh, well, I'm not doing this good enough. It's the opposite of that. We're not giving you pressure to overhaul your life. But I want you to hear this, that just one small shift starts to build that momentum to bring the change that you're wanting. So as you move through this holiday season, what could you be intentional about in your time, in your spending, or even in your self-expectations? I hope that this episode today has encouraged you to pause and to consider what you're choosing, both in the active and in passive, right? (laughs) Sometimes it's that unintentional choice. 
that this holiday season, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it can be intentional. It can be fulfilling. It can be enjoyable, even in those moments where it feels this, like everything's like at my house at dinner the other day. Everything was crazy and kids are running around and laughing and messes and dishes, but it was joy filled. And in that moment, I got to choose how I was going to respond and react to that. If it was going to be a stressful response or if I was going to enjoy that time, right? It's not about doing it all, but what matters to you. You have the power to create a season that reflects your values, a season that fills you and your family with joy, a season that brings peace. So I want to thank you so much today for joining me on this episode. I'd love if you send me a message and let me know maybe what you're getting out of it or what you're choosing, or maybe something you even realized, man, I was choosing this unintentionally. There was something in my life that I was wanting to change and I hadn't been working on changing it, which means I was choosing this thing and now I'm moving in a different direction. I would love to encourage you in that, but keep making those choices that nourish your soul. And until next time, take care of yourself and keep shining.